In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to scroll text upward to the beat of music with great control. This comes as a question from one of my subscribers who was trying to use a conventional tool. Let me show you what that tool does. I'm going to click on the title room or I can press the F7 key. And one of the options we have is this one that says scroll up. Now scroll up works really good, but there were a couple of limitations. First of all, it started the text off the bottom of the screen and he wanted it to pop in in the center of the screen. What he did was he created a range and then he edited out the beginning of that range and put it back into the project. Well, we're going to do something a little more sophisticated here. So what I'd like to do is show you an example of what we're about to try and then we'll show you some steps for creating that yourself. The first thing I want to do is click on my music track and then I'm going to use the automatic beat detection. Now I, if I right click on it I have a pop-up menu and my menu will cover the options. I'm going to click on use automatic beat detection. Now in this case I have an error message because I trimmed the first couple of seconds off of this and this all of it says is there's something at the beginning of my audio track that I can't edit, that's fine. I'll click OK. And now I'm going to turn on my beat detection and I'm going to press the A key whenever I hear the beat that I want and I'll probably get into this about 20 seconds and then stop. So we'll click on play key. Okay, that should be sufficient. So what we're going to do now that we have some of the beats detected here is we're going to use it when the bass comes in to set the timing of our title. So I'm going to go to my title room and I'll go back to all content and I'll just take the, take the generic my title and drag it down. And I'm going to put that right there on the left side where the bass beat begins to to click in. Now I have a title I've already done some work on so in this case to save time I'm going to delete this one and now I'm going to drag the one that I did a bit of work on so we'll save time. So this is a, a my title all I did was put some names in. So let me show you what we're going to do with this particular title to work with the beats. We have the beats selected and so the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out how many names I want to scroll in. I've put a, a cluster of them here, so we'll double click and go into our title designer. And what I'd like is I'd like the, every name to be off the screen when the other name is in the center of the screen. So I have to change the spacing between the lines. Easiest way to do that is click anywhere, do control A, that will select everything I've typed. I have like six different lines here. And then I'm going to change the spacing here. If I click the down arrow, I see I can slide up to 72. Well, that's not quite enough, but I can, again, put another number in. I'll just put in 90, press Enter, and now it's spaced so that when the first name is in the center of the screen, the name following it is off the screen. And so as you uniformly spaced here, and that's all you have to do is type a name on every line and then determine the spacing you want. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some keyframing. So I'm going to click on OK with what I've done so far. And now I have it beginning 
on this beat. So we'll go back a few frames and play it, and it will immediately appear in the middle of the screen. But you see the timing isn't what I want. So I'm going to go to the next beat marker, click on that, and then I'm going to click on my title. Now you notice I have a time indicator right here. I'm going to set a keyframe that's automatically the second beat. So what I want to do is at the second beat is I want the second name in the middle of the screen. So that happens to be Jason. So with my marker set here, I set a position keyframe. I'm going to drag down so Jason's about in the center of the screen. I'm going to have to eyeball this a little bit. I could put more of a grid on. That would make it a lot easier. We'll do it kind of the old-fashioned way here. So I can move this up or down as much as I want. I want to make sure it's horizontally centered if still. So I'll turn my horizontal center on. It adjusted it a bit to the left. So at that beat, Jason's name should be in the center of the screen. Now we're going to adjust as if the beat isn't totally uniform, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll click on OK. So I go to the next beat marker. I click on that in the timeline. It turns yellow. I go back and into the title designer. I'm going to set a position keyframe. And now I want my third name, which happens to be Sarah Wilson. OK, so at this keyframe, I need this to be down a bit more because I want Sarah's name to be right in the middle of the screen. That's close enough. And then we'll make sure we're centered still. So that's Sarah. I'll click on OK. And then we'll go to the next beat marker. Edit the title again. It will tell me where that is. Well, I have a, a keyframe position near there, but I'll set another one. We're going to take the other one out. We don't need that. So I'll click on that and right click and choose the delete option. We'll go back to the previous keyframe. And this is where I want the next name, which will be Oscar Patterson. So Oscar needs to be in the middle of the screen. Looks like I have more names than I need in this case. We'll drag down until we get Oscar about in the center of the screen. OK, and then we'll make sure we're centered again. And click on OK. Now let's see what happens when we try to play this segment and it should be timed a lot better by now. Okay, because we had the last keyframe on that name, that's where it ended. But it does show you, I think, a way in which you can control the pacing of this so that, in this case, every single name is at the center of the screen on the beat of the music. This is really effective if, uh, again, if the music isn't totally uniform. Uh, the other thing you can do if it is uniform is you can take out every keyframe except the first and the last, and it should play about the same way. That's one way in which you can stroll the text from the bottom of the screen up to the beat of music in CyberLink PowerDirector.